Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Vermeer pack. My affiliation link is down below, but first of all a massive thank you to Giants for providing me with the early access version, along with many other YouTubers, always really appreciated. So I'm going to share it with you today. What we're going to do is we're going to mow our grass field. Our grass field now is pretty small, they've built on it, so yeah, it's only half the size it used to be. But we've got the mower, the TM1410. We've got the windrower just over here, or the rake, the uh, the R2800, and of course we have this baler, the trailed one, the 605N, but yeah, we're going to be using the self-propel one today, the ZR51200. Absolutely fascinating having a self-propel baler. Never seen one before ever, so it'll be uh, very exciting to see. And of course, then we have the last piece of equipment, the bale shredder. I could very easily find a use for every piece of equipment here. So yeah, the Vermeer pack is released on August the 23rd. So tomorrow, if you're watching this on the day of release. So yeah, we're going to use the Kubota tractor. It's been given to us just for this week by the dealership. We're going to attach to this mower just over here. And I know that we already own a big mower. It is just to demonstrate the new equipment. Always enjoy watching that flap around. Oh, because the game has just updated, it might just stutter the old bit. It does sometimes do that after I've updated. Soon clears. I guess it's reloading textures or something. I'm not too sure of the reason why. Anyway, yes, the field is just over here. Yeah, it's really reducing size, but that's probably a good thing. Because we don't have our massive mower to use today. This is still not a bad size, though. There it is. Okay. So let's just lower that down, get it started up, and yeah, we're going to go with a nice first lap around the headland. I've not removed the speed limiter, so we can actually use this at 14 miles per hour. And yeah, because I have lost some of my field to buildings, we're going to go all the way over here. Get as much grass as possible. I think I actually do own that piece. I'm not too sure. I'll have to have a look again later. But um, yeah, I think I own more than what I actually cut. I'm not always going to the field boundaries. So that's great. Nice and wide and offset so we're not driving over the grass first. And then back down to where we started. I think I'm going to keep using the Kubota for both of these two jobs, the mowing and the windrowing. And then we can move on to the self propelled tractor. I'm going to have to cut through the centre. This field is probably now wider than it is long. It's really changed. But I don't think we're going to build on this top section because it's just not level enough. And then really I want to spin around. Oh, it's very manoeuvrable. And get back down here. So we're flying over it. Get this done in no time. And hopefully spin around again. Might be a bit tight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably need a bigger headland for that. But that's my general approach. Seems to work okay. So I'll get this done, and then I'll see you when we have the windrower. Just look at all those fine products. I think we're actually selling them today, hopefully. Got so many to get rid of. But first, we must get this field done. So here we are, we've got the Windrower. 
And that mower is amazing, because when it folds up it looks really small, but actually, it's pretty big. I managed to get this done in no time at all. Okay. So I think I'm actually going to keep this field as grass bells, not silage bells. We do have some silage, not a huge amount, but I'm probably going to be getting another grass field very, very soon. We have enough to keep us going for now. And I've got the backup silage bells as well. So yeah, the grass bells will be for the sheep. So they're not going to be taking any hay, which is good because, yeah, the hay is really just for the cows. Right, so there we go. You can see our working width. Again, we should be able to get this done in a relatively short period of time. And really interesting, it's not like the... Uh, well, I don't know if you'd even call it a windrow. Is it, it, this must just be a rake. Because it's not like the, the rotating, not like rotary. They're more like cylinders. I really don't know much about windrows, but it's uh, an interesting design. Sort of brings it in from the outside, passes it through each springtime until you get to the centre. And there we go. It's our first lap done. So I'll get the rest done, and then we can do the same thing. We'll move on. And we'll get the self-propelled baler, which is, of course, what I'm looking forward to the most. Really is an interesting looking thing. At the same time, though, it's not cheap. It's just over £200,000. So that is much more expensive than just putting a baler on the back of a tractor. So we'll see what it's like. Okay then, here we go. First time I've sat in it. Here is the interior. I suppose it's very similar to sitting in a combine harvester. Or in a self-propelled mower. It is amazing. Oh, I suppose a swather. That's what it's most closely related to. I would say. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. So we've currently got the bale size set to 125. We can go up to 180. And we also do have a bale counter. Very nice. Hmm, I think I do have the hybrid over there. Actually, that bale wrapper. It is indeed. So that could do, if we get a lot of these, we could do some in here. We could wrap them for silage. Uh, let me just check what the maximum size is for that. Okay, 180. So yeah, I can decide later. We'll just do all of the bales straight away as 180 centimeters. And then if I want to keep them all to grass, we can do. If I want to do them all as silage, we can do. It doesn't really matter. Here is the demonstration of the self-propelled baler. So there's the pickup right at the back. So it's basically just like a baler with a cab attached to it, and an engine of course, and a transmission, and all the necessary components. But there you go. Easier too, I suppose, because you can really get a good view, and you can align with it. Like, when you're towing a baler, the baler cuts in a bit. Oh, that's the first bell. But yeah, whereas with this, it's going to be perfectly aligned. 
So, here it comes. Our first bell, and that should have registered on the counter. There we go. So I'm guessing that is, because we've got two different numbers there, one of them must be per session and one must be all time. I, I'm not 100% sure, but if I was to have a guess, that's what I would say. It would make perfect sense. Very manoeuvrable too, actually. That's something that should be pointed out. Uh, like if we had to back up with the baler, it would be much harder than with this. This is... Uh, well, I reckon it could... Is it a zero turn? Let's just see if it can turn on the spot. It is indeed. Look at that. So yeah, that's definitely a selling point. Extremely manoeuvrable. Kind of reminds me of a snail. It's not slow, just the shape. But then again, I'm a bit odd. So there we go, we've got bell number two. It's popping out there. Yeah, I like it. I really like it. I think we're going to be buying one. Luckily on this series we can afford to get it. But then of course, yes, it is for round bales, not for square bales. So if you're into uh, square, then it might not be for you. I am into square. But if we're just using it for doing silage bales around the yard, that's fine. I just really hate putting, I hate stacking round bales on a trailer. They always get away from me. Anyway, yes, we'll continue and we'll get this field completed. Hoping we do have enough grass left to do one more bale. 180 centimetres does demand quite a bit. But I suppose we do have this for three days, so that's not really going to be a problem. I could just go over to my other field, cut a bit of grass, and get it finished off, but we'll hope for the best. Actually, there's lots of little bits dotted around which I've missed, so we can easily make it up to 100% if necessary, but it's looking promising. Yep, we're going to make it, but we're going to have a bit left over. So I suppose I'll just pick it up anyway, and hopefully we can, uh, we can get it filled up again in a day or two. Because that is the field finished. I love it. I think it's brilliant. But just as a quick comparison, I think it would be quite interesting. Uh, if we go into balers here, one which can do 180 centimeters. This one here is 57,500. So yeah, that's obviously considerably cheaper than a self propel one, 214,000. But then with self propel one, it frees up another tractor so you can use it for something else. It's a self-contained unit, so it's got its own engine, transmission, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, it is, well, for this farm at least, a really nice thing to have. Anyway, just thought I'd tell you. Um, yes, my game crashed and I've just had to do it all again. So, <laughs> yeah, anyway, we shall move on. I think the reason why I crashed possibly is because I'm currently on the early access version. So this is not the finished version. So hopefully once it's been released, that won't happen. So I'll part this back over here. Hopefully we can use it again in a day or two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shred some straw. Now, obviously, we have square straw bales. And this is for round straw bales. So, yeah, not what it's meant for. 
but I'm hoping it will still work if I just sort of stick it in there vertically. I just really want to see it in action. Because then I can say I've tested everything. We'll use the other baler, hopefully, in an episode or two. But that's not bad. In one episode, we're going to use everything but the one baler. Oh, and also, I must thank everybody who mentioned in the previous episode, in the comments section, that I can actually just pick up loose straw with the loading wagon, the forage wagon, and then tip that directly into the cow shed for bedding. I didn't know I could do that, so that's really nice. I thought it had to go into a bale shredder first. I've decided I am just going to add one bale, just so I can demonstrate this properly, because otherwise it's not going to be very, uh, not a very good demonstration. So I believe, because it folds up like that, I unfold it, never used it before, and then I think, well, maybe the bell should be the other way around. There we go. So if I now back up into that, it's probably a big bale actually, probably a bit too big. But let's just see how that performs. I'm very careful, because that is very big. Yes, <laughs> there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not very good with the mouse controls. But that is in. So, and it's even being held in as well. It's like a clamp, a claw. Um, yes, it also came to me what they're called, those wheels on the front of the baler, the caster wheels. I was trying to think all the way through my baling. It didn't come to me until just now. Uh, right, so, yes, so we need to set the tips out. We've got straw blower, and we've got unload. Hmm. So we want to have straw blower. I think I should probably go in the other way. Oh, it looks like the robot's in here. It can't do anything. And here we go. Wow, it's like a massive tidal wave of straw. Very effective. And yeah, this is the bedding, so it's going to be visible fairly soon. Yeah, we can see it just filling up in here. Oh. You can see it. But it probably takes quite a lot. Because even the, the smaller cow shed took about three bales, three big bales. Yes, I should get my feed mixture out of here because the robot is doing nothing because it's completely in the way. But there we go. Bit of uh, bedding for them. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. It's back out of here. Yeah, so um, if I was to continue using this, I would probably make round straw bales, but I don't think we're going to need to. Our farm is a bit big. We're going to be sticking with using either full loads of straw in the loading wagon or in the feed mixer. But yeah, very nice, definitely good for the smaller farms. I do still have 37,000 litres in here and it is almost full. So that, I've just taken the robot's job. We'll gradually get through this. Actually, it's going to get through it really quickly because that is full. That shed is full of cows. It's very, very busy. So th it's actually going to be quite interesting. Will it unload if there's no space? Yes, it will. Or will it? Is it actually emptying? When he gets to here, I'll have a closer look. Yeah, it looks like it is going down. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, as we have a full hail off of straw, we can either use a trailer or the um, mixer wagon just over there to fill it up, which I think is what I'm going to do. Anyway, these products, I'm hoping the price is good today so that we can actually sell them. If it isn't, then that won't be the end of the world. Yes, I think it's peaked. Let's just see. It does say October for the butter, 2916. Yeah, I think I'm just going to sell everything anyway. It's getting super busy. The prices are not bad. So if I just get my lorry, not that one, we'll get a nice full load. For some reason, I redid this. The bales mostly ended up at the top and the bottom of the field. Must just be the way I was doing it. 
but we'll probably get them wrapped, I would say. Keep a few, maybe keep three as just grass for the sheep. But then the rest could go into the X tractor just here. Okay, now I've cleared all that. So is there any more space to spawn? Well, is there anything else to spawn in the in the cleared space? Uh, looks like there isn't, no. So, we'll go over to the other dairy. It's not a bad load though, I think we're almost full. And we'll pick up whatever we have there. I know we do have things, we've got cheese and probably butter. Close the curtain for now. But that must be pretty close to full capacity. It's going to be good though, we can finish the episode with a nice big load of money to fund the new self-propelled baler. Now next time I'm most likely going to be doing the grape harvesting. Shouldn't take long. I didn't fertilize it this year, so we should be able to just fly over it. And the olives will have to be done in October. So yeah, I think we can hopefully get both of those done in a very short period of time. And then the big job is gonna be sugar beets. We've got loads of sugar beet. But I'm gonna go for a much bigger harvester. Blimey. I don't think we're going to have space. No, that is full. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have two loads today. Let me just spin around. We'll get over to the farm shop. It's all this milk the cows are producing. The dairies are working very hard and producing a lot of products. And then, of course, they don't sell very often. So it's really building up. So this other dairy might have loads to spawn. Anyway, here goes the first one. I think this will be the biggest load by far though. Let's watch it all sell. Looks promising. This is why I don't really need to wait until the price is super good on this series, because it's just really good anyway. <laughs> Almost £160,000. Here we are for round two. Let's see what we've got. Okay, something else just spawned. That's it. Okay, so not as much as before. I've got 12,000 litres in total. Still, that would be a few thousand pounds. And there we go. A little bit extra. Hmm. 53,386. That seems exceptionally good, actually. It's amazing. So we're back up at 731, uh, which means we can start to buy some more expensive stuff again. Suggestions welcome. But, uh, yeah, we do need to focus on finishing the slurry as well in the big field. So we'll do that probably next time. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the first preview of the Vermeer pack. We'll continue using it, as I said. Um, but that's not bad, though, I think. We used nearly everything in the first episode. So, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it, and until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.